All right, before you went to Phoenix, Alex, I, I said I wanted to be able to get a new one of these. Uh, so I, I think that that's in order now. So welcome back to the podcast and, and congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on your new little merchandise now that you get to get. I know, I know. I got I to gotta stock up. Uh, it's exciting. I'm sure it's been a, a fun week for you. Just tell me, what what, what has the past few days been like for from you? <laughs> it's been amazing. It's been a great time celebrating with the team great time just you know in general just you know seeing the UConn fans we drove back from the airport at Gamble it's crazy because like we know what's to come after last year with the celebration so it's just exciting to kind of relive everything again yeah I mean it, it seemed like it had been uh the week kind of started off on, on a crazy note with the with the flights I, I know now that that's all behind it. And you've come back with the championship. Maybe you, you could laugh at that a little bit. But what was the start of that week like for you? It sucked. I totally forgot about that. It was awful. I mean. Sorry to bring it up. No, no, no. Um, to think, Our flight was supposed to be at 11, uh, 6, 6 p.m. Then it goes to 11. And then we really take off at 1.30 Eastern time. Get back. Get to the hotel room at 4 30 Phoenix time, which is like 7 30 Eastern. Yeah. Basically, up the entire night. It sucked. I thought it was going to affect us, but it really, we were chilling and then practice, practice went well. I mean, it really, it sucked, but I mean, we, we made the most of it. We didn't care as much once, uh, once we saw the venue, once we saw everything, it was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you walk in there. Um, what, what's it like seeing that stadium set up for the first time? I know you had seen the one obviously last year when you're playing in Houston, but I'm sure it's still a little bit different walking into this stadium in Arizona. This one felt more open. I don't know why it felt more open. It was a lot lighter. Um, yeah, I liked, I liked the setup. I, Houston was definitely unique, but I think this one was just more open and, um, uh, I mean, still, I think it was still 70,000 people in there or yeah. something. So it was still wild. And, um, uh, yeah, it was, I still liked, I mean, it's crazy. I played in two NFL stadiums, so I'll definitely, you know, I definitely liked both. Yeah, so leading up to that game, you obviously Saturday had, had the game uh, against Bama. Uh, they, they gave you a bit of a run in for your money for, for kind of first, like, what, maybe 25, 30 minutes. What was the key to just, like, staying confident in that game? I, I know early on, I think they were shooting at the end of the first half, like 73% from three. What What was just kind of, the mentality heading into that second half uh, of that game? Uh, just defensively. We just had to be sharper defensively. We weren't as tough as we wanted to be on the defensive end. And they had the number of one or two offense going into that game, and clearly they shoot a lot of threes. So we just, we did a good job of limiting threes, I felt like, in the first half. They were just wide open ones that they were making. And uh, we thought in the second half all we had to do was just, you know, continue what we're doing, just be tougher on defense, tougher on the backboard, and then – um make the miss instead of giving them open threes and I think they went like three of 11 or something in the second half so um, yeah that was definitely a much better job so, so you win Saturday not not a ton of time to, to really kind of celebrate making the championship game before you got to turn around and play that game Monday against Purdue I'm curious what's the prep like in that kind of turnaround for the national championship you guys were the the later game on Saturday so look what a couple hours less than, than Purdue has to prep, but what what's going through uh you know that next day and change like for you? I think um really when we get back we'll have like thirty minutes whether you want to do recovery shower you know see family and then thirty minutes later you're watching the Purdue film and um uh, we're getting a like a you know we're getting a lot of knowledge about them like uh coach it was Coach Murray scouts so he's telling us you know in depth about everybody and uh, we're watching their stuff and you know getting like a basic understanding so really we just had film on them and then um at that night after we beat alabama then the next day it's a lot more film we did I think like two film sessions of them and then on the court stuff when we go to our close practice we're doing scouting there and um uh, just seeing different game plans but and then we have the shoot around on the game of too so um it's really it's actually a good amount of time and like you kind of get a lot done and um uh, you know, in what seems like a short amount of, you know, prep time. So this one actually came in uh, from social when I, I asked for questions here, and it, it connects to what you just talked about. And that's just in terms of, like, how does scout work? Is that just something that rotates through the different assistants throughout the season and they kind of come prepped with, with the preview there and walking you through the film? Yeah, I think um, during the tournament, we'll um, we'll alternate. It's usually Coach uh, Kamani and uh, 
Coach uh, Murray doing the scouts. So um, they'll alternate during the tournament. Then Coach Early, he does obviously he does all every game. So yeah. um, they alternate. Then there's um, they they get assigned like Big East teams to do. So they'll be watching their specific Big East teams throughout the season, and then um non-conference they they alternate too so really it's just those two just watching film all the time and uh when we played out alabama i know coach murray was watching both purdue and nc state so you know just being ready for whatever whatever was to happen yeah so you know you head into to monday's game um the game's a little later in the day what's the anticipation like through the day on, on monday leading into it it was awful it was awful waiting the entire day just to play the game um the day before it sucked. That was the longest day ever. Um, the, the day in between, it sucked. That was too long of a day. We waited too long. Just, you know, we just wanted to play. And then, you know, it was good to have shoot around. Then after shoot around, it was just like, you know, we're ready to go. So definitely just anxious to get out there. So you, you, you get out there Monday, um, places packed, balls tipped. You got a championship on the line. Uh, how do you feel heading into that game uh, against Purdue on Monday? I was excited. I was excited. You won the best to win a national championship, and everyone kept talking about us, Purdue, and Houston throughout the entire year. So it was good to play a team like Purdue just from, you know, they are, they're extremely well-coached, great culture, great everything. Everything that they do is, I think, is ran the, the, the right way that college basketball should be. So – um, you know, it was exciting to play against them. And of course they had, you know, back to back national player of the year. And like, you know, it's it's a worthy team to play in the championship. So um, yeah, it was exciting just to play against them. So I've got to ask the question that, that's on everyone's mind when we're talking about that game Monday uh, against Purdue. Uh Donovan's in foul trouble, Samson fouls out, falls to you to uh have to defend Zach Eady. Um, uh, what's what's your initial reaction when you get matched up with him? I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at the bench. I was expecting, um, you know, Yusef to come in with his size, and like I was just looking at that. I was waiting for him to come in, and then I seen Haas coming in. I was like, oh boy, it's me now. So I knew I played. Um, I played a lot of uh small small ball five, especially when Donovan was out. So I was comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, his size. I mean, it's it's it was like summer workouts when I had to go against Donovan. So um. You know, just had to get used to it, but he's way he's taller than Donovan, bigger, and um, you know, the, the game plan was if he wants to score, you could score. I'm just yeah. I can't foul you, or else the clock's gonna stop and you know just create more hectic. So if he wants to score, you could score. I mean, the first bucket he had, he elbowed me in the face or the nose or something. So yeah. nice low. All right, <laughs> All right. he's he's a tall player. <laughs> Um, hey, I mean, you, you did a pretty good job because I think he missed the next couple shots he took while uh, while you were guarding him. He missed he missed a lefty hook. I do remember that. And then after, I think he got a couple more buckets. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then Don came in and really helped us out. Yeah. Gar like Garbage time buckets, right? Um, uh, so, <laughs> you know, at, you, you go through that game. I, I think one thing that stood out that game uh, and also Saturday in particular, I, I felt like you were playing next level defense, you know, from what we've seen fr from you. I know you blocked a couple shots. What what were you, you know, thinking from a, a defensive perspective? You just completely locked in? Yeah, I knew. Um, we go into every game being like, you know, you can't let your shots affect how you play. And, um, you know, I wasn't hitting shots in that game particularly the way that I wanted to. So I wanted to affect the game on the defense and rebounding again. And I um, thought, I, thought I did a great job of that. And there's always a, you know, confidence boost knowing that, you know, Coach Hurley's leaving me out there, even though I'm not making shots. Like, I've got to be affecting winning in a different way. So, defensively, and then it's just credit to um, Kamani and uh, Coach Murray from, you know, Alabama-Purdue game, allowing me to get the confidence to switch onto other guards and they trust me to guard other teams, you know, best yeah. players with the guards. So, um, yeah, it definitely gave me a confidence boost. And I think – of course, these two years, I think that's probably one of the biggest jumps I've made from last year to this year's, you know, the defense. Well, let's talk about a couple other guys uh, on the team and the impacts that they had over this final foreign championship uh, weekend. Obviously, Steph in the first game, they, they try to sag off him, make him beat him from beyond the arc. And he, he did exactly that in that first one. Um, how impressed were you with, with him as a freshman, just being able to kind of take on 
you know, the little added pressure when they they say, hey, we're not we're not going to defend you there. Just beat us. And, and he's able to not only do that, but then, I mean, you know, did everything else in that game, whether it was lockdown defense, you know, driving to the basket. It seemed like he just really had his A game that day. Um, Been super impressed with him the entire year. I mean, if teams wanted to sag off him, he had the ultimate confidence to shoot it. We always tell him, you're open, shoot it. And he shot it. And, um, yeah, what he did for us this entire year, it's – Nothing short of amazing, and I loved everything that he did. I loved, you know, I mean, the fact that as a freshman he's guarding other teams' best players, it's it's special, and it speaks a lot about who he is. And he always came into practice just being will, willing to coach. I was um being willing to coach, be coached, and um I was a shooting partner too, so it was definitely special just you know being with him every day. So, um, yeah, it's it was it was a good um. Good year, great, great year for him. I I generally thought he was the best freshman in the country just from you know the impact that he made on both ends. When when it comes to to championship games in particular, it seems like that's when Tristan shows up uh, biggest and brightest. There, uh, I know we heard the BS last year that this team didn't really have a point guard. He proved him wrong last year. I think he he proved everyone wrong again this year, showing what he could do. Um, playing with him for these past two years, what's it what's it been like? I'm gonna miss Bob Cousy. <laughs> he was a good guy. Um, you know, it sucks knowing that, you know, next year there'll be a different point guard here and, um, you know, someone else that's going to be dishing out dimes to me. So, it, you know, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, I mean, I love playing with him. Just even just who he is off the court as a person. I just love being around him. And he just has, he just brought, you know, good energy to, like, to the team. I felt like just being calm and like, you know, truly himself and, on the court, he was a killer. I mean, he's one of the best defensive rebounding, not defensive, rebounding guards in general. Yeah. Um, always looking to pass and create his own shot. Yeah, he was he was something special. I know. I mean, he got on the Huskies of Honor thing and uh, cemented himself as, you know, arguably one of the best guards to come out of this, you know, program. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosal's Meats. This fourth-generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosal's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. If you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. I know Monday night everyone had the uh, the Donovan Zach Eady matchup circled. What was it like seeing those two guys get to go up against each other and being on the court as that matchup was kind of going on throughout the game? There was no space in the paint. Trying to get into paint space anywhere. Um, no, they were. Um, it was awesome. I know college basketball. They're excited. They want to see the best. And I thought they were the two best centers in the country this year. And um, for them to go at it and just you know someone of likes Donovan size. Um it was it was super cool and um it was a great matchup. Celebration after the game, you know, confetti starts coming down, all of that. What what was that like this year for you? It honestly it was the same as last year, I'm not gonna lie. It just doesn't feel real. And the fact that it's back to back too makes it extra special knowing that you know, we're able to finally connect this year's team and last year's group together, not just from the returners, but everybody's a part yeah. of it from last year to this year's team, knowing that back to back. I mean, our teams are going to get talked about forever now, and uh, it's an extremely hard task to do. So once we saw the confetti, it was like, all, right, all this hard work's paid off. All the yelling from the coach and staff paid off, the practices, everything, you know that we just worked so hard for and just spent countless hours together. It was, it was all worth it. What was it like getting to now celebrate this moment with the guys who, who weren't there last year, a guy like Cam or Steph, the other freshmen. Um, what was that like? It was exciting just to see their reaction, knowing that they finally get to experience that feeling that we felt throughout the entire year, knowing, knowing how good that feeling is. We wanted them to experience it. That was like a huge motivational factor yeah. for, uh, for them to get it. It was it was awesome, and just seeing their smiles, their excitement. I mean, never seen Cam so happy. Never seen Steph. All of them, all the freshmen were, the, all the freshmen were like kids at Christmas, like running around, just excited to be there, and just excited. Like they couldn't think it was real, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I just loved that feeling. I just loved seeing you know the new guys, especially like feel what we felt last year. 
I, I know we got that great clip of uh, you and Coach Harley in one shining moment. There's then the video of you guys uh, seeing it happen. Uh, how excited were you to see that in there? I was so happy. I mean, <laughs> that's my guy. I love him. So, you know, just being able to, you know, hug him and see him during the one shining moment was special. And, you know, I, I love giving out hugs. So um, <laughs> and he knows that. And I was able to, I was able to hug him. He doesn't like hugs during the season. So it was a good <laughs> hug after the season. <laughs> um, did you get to see, I, I know in the crowd, uh, I know at least on Saturday and I don't know, I know he wasn't there on Monday, but I know Jordan was there Saturday. Joey was there over the weekend. Did you get to check out, get to hang out a little bit with those guys for, from last year who were there this year? I wasn't able to see Jordan. He, um, yeah, I know he had a game and then left yeah. right after. So I wasn't able to see him, but of course I saw Joey. Joey was with us. He was with us the entire day before the um, the day before the national championship. And yeah, I missed Joey. I hadn't seen him in a while, so I missed him. And you know, he's he's one of the best people to be around. So I was just I was just so excited to see him. When you know all is said and done, I know it's still just a a couple days since it since it's happened. But what are you going to remember the most about this year's team? a lot we were we were tight off the court and it was just such a fun group to be around just so many different personalities and uh it was truly fun and um we really i think you could just take away how locked in we were and just you know every day we were just so locked in in the moment and you saw it every day in practice you saw it every day during the off day so just how badly we wanted everything and just locked in we never looked ahead we never let you know, target get on our back. We never let anything, you know, distract us from what we wanted to do. And we got pushed hard. I mean, the coaching staff, they were they were intense this year for sure. And, you know, it's definitely, I definitely say just being locked in, just not letting any distractions get our way. When, when you look back on both last year's tournament run and this year's, I mean, it seems impossible when you look at that double digit streak that you guys did in all of these games. Like it, 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 NCAA tournament's not supposed to come this easy, but it, it, I know, I know a lot of hard work goes into being able to maintain that. But what, what's it like knowing that you're just part of these dominant teams in March? It's, it's a blessing. I mean, that I think we all just have different March madness journeys. And, you know, these last two years, it's our journey just dominating. And, yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it's a blessing. Just, you know, it wasn't it wasn't easy. We could just say that. It may it may have looked easy, it may have, you know, whatever, but it was far from easy. And every team that we played we had huge respect for. So um, but I think when I look back, when my basketball career is over, whenever that's over, I'm gonna look back and watch other teams of March Madness, knowing like, all right, these teams can't do what we did. And um it's special. It's gonna be, you know, it's a memory that we'll always have with each other and just knowing that. I got my brothers for life from this year's team and last year's team that, you know, these, the rings and what we've won can't be taken away from us. I, I know last year, I think it was at, at your locker after the national championship game, you talked about being able to do it again and, and win another one. Did, did you ever really think that you, like heading into the, the season that this would be how it would ultimately end up with you guys actually being able to complete that back-to-back? -back? I think after the Europe trip, I thought we could actually do it during the summer. I had doubts. Not gonna lie, we did not look good in the summer. None, of, no one. It wasn't. It wasn't a good summer for us. We didn't really look too well. And um, but I think after the Europe trip, we like. I think that was like the moment where we bonded so well that we got extremely close with each other, and you know, we just saw who we all were off the court. We, yeah. we, you know, basketball as crazy as we are, and you know, not normal and everything. Um. You know, we just wanted to bond, and we weren't prioritizing basketball as much. As long as we won those uh, games, which we did, but um, I think after we bonded and really just saw, you know, like, spent time with each other off the court, exploring new cultures, I was like, all right, we got something here. All right, let's go to some of the social media ones. We of course have some fun ones as always that that came in here. Um, let's start with this one. Which Hurley spikes the ball better, Andrew or uh, or Coach Dan Hurley? There, <laughs> last year. It was Andrew Spike. This year, Andrew Spike was disappointing because I, I assume he didn't want to get technical. So this year, I'm going to give it to Coach Hurley, but last year was definitely Andrew Spike. All right. All right. There you go. Look at that. You, you, you can't piss anyone off with that answer because you gave them both some credit. So ni nice, nicely done there. Um, 
Let's see. Got another parade coming up. How excited are you to be part of that? I'm so excited. That was probably my favorite memory from last year. 50,000 people just swarmed Hartford, seeing everybody, seeing the kids, seeing the fans. It was so special. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond excited for it. Um, yeah, no, I know. I know everyone's excited for that. Let's see what else we got. Um, after the parade, it's already time to start thinking about, about the off season. What's that like for you at areas of game that you're kind of focusing on in the off season or, or have you not even thought about that yet? No, I've definitely thought about it. I think, um, shot, making sure my shot's more consistent. I think during, I didn't finish as strong as I would have liked to shoot in the ball. So I definitely say making my shot more consistent continue to add games to add things offensively. I think this year I did a much better job of attacking the basket compared to last year. So just continue to work on that. And then um, my body, I'd say just continue to get stronger, just be able to guard multiple positions and get a lot quicker too. Yeah. We want to keep seeing more of those dunks. Hell yeah. Windmills. Uh, windmills. Oh, oh, windmill. Okay. All right. There we go. See, maybe a between the legs dunk of, you know, or if it's like you know a 50 point game there we go hey and that we know that's well within the uh, realm of possibility there uh so yeah. um let's see what else do we have here all right this, this is a fun one who from this year's team um are you most looking forward to seeing them grow into a like a bigger role for next year stewie i think he was probably one of the most not one. He was the most improved player on this year's team, I think. Just seeing how he was in the summer to where he's at now, um, I'm extremely excited about it. Yeah. All right. We got another one that's kind of in that same realm, and that's who from this year's team are you going to miss the most next year? Tristan. It's going to be Tristan. I know. Uh, just being with him for the past two years and just spending time with him off the court and on the court, just, I don't know, I'd I, I just love Tristan. No, yeah, I mean, I don't want to boost his ego or anything, but he's just a great person and a great player. We um we talked a little bit about the assistants earlier when it came to to scouting, but and I know Coach Harley has been very complimentary of this of his staff that he's put together in in the importance of them from a player's perspective. What what's it been like working with this staff uh, with with Kamani with Luke with uh, Coach Moore there? A blessing. It's truly a blessing. It's like having four head coaches coaching you every day. And um, I mean, I love Kamani. Kamani, he's 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 an everyday guy. I mean, they're all everyday guys. But you know, I think I knew I'd like Kamani right away. Just during my redshirt year, even before home games, he's working me out and um, really just taking the time away, you know, from his scout or from you know the folks of the game just to work me out. Like I'm forever thankful for that. And. I knew I knew something was different about him when he was willing to do that. And then Luke, I mean, he's the smartest basketball genius I've ever met in my life. I mean, the amount of games he watches, the amount of players he knows, he knows every stat, he knows every analytic. And it was just, I mean, to be coached by him, it just, you know, especially since, you know, he helps with my position too. So, you know, he's willing, you know, just to work with us every day and just continue to talk to us every day and just be honest with us. And T. Moore, he's the vet, so we love being around him. He brings, you know, he brings the goofy side. He's funny. He's just, you know, he's a bright light in case there's like a dark day going on and that, um, you know, we love cracking jokes with him. And, you know, he's got endless stories for us and you now he's got four natties. So, you know, yeah. let's continue that's some more for him. All right, I got, I've got just two more here, one serious one, a little bit more fun. So we'll do the serious one first, and uh, everyone will get on me if I didn't ask it. So um, I know I know, I know, you haven't had a lot of time to think on this yet, but w what's kind of the, the process for you in terms of thinking about next year and making decision? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know yet. I haven't thought about that much yet. Um, I got to talk to, you know, the coaches still. I got to talk to my parents, you know, my agents, and – Go from there, but I do love UConn. I'll say that I love UConn. All right, all right. It gave us a little something. Um, all right. So, so we'll end. We'll end with this one. Um, I know we've talked about it a couple times on here with my uh my lucky Chick Fil A sandwich. It, it ultimately uh played out. It, it worked. Um, you think I have any argument to uh kind of pitch myself to Coach Hurley for getting a ring for this year's uh this year's run? You should absolutely. I mean. What there was what games that you didn't need Chick Fil A with the losses, right? Yeah. 
It, yeah, the two, the first two uh, losses, the third one, I, I messed up. I got a side salad with it instead of the fries. So that, that was my bad. Um, so with your actual order, you were 37 and 0. Yeah. Or when did it start? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. 37. Yeah, hell yeah, you deserve a ring. I'll let him know. I'll let him know tomorrow when I see him. I'll, there we go. There we go. I I think he's going to be coming on the podcast soon. So now that I've got your buy-in, I I can make the full pitch to him. Yeah, yeah. I think he, you you definitely got to let him know about the thirty-seven and zero record, and then he'll 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 ship you out of ring. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, Alex, I I appreciate as always. Uh, congrats again. It, it's been fun doing this uh, another season with you. Um, I know this won't be the last episode. We'll we'll be doing more no matter where you're going. Uh, I I, I hope we get to continue doing some of these. It, it, it's a lot of fun. No, for sure. We definitely will. All right, awesome. Thank you again. Thank you for everything this season. Yeah, you fun bet. Blew by. Yeah, it really did. Well, thanks and uh, congrats again. Enjoy the parade and uh, all the other fun stuff you got planned. Thank you so much.